Okay, so in the last video, we introduced these three basic derivative rules for dealing with combinations of functions, and we showed why the constant rule is true. In this one, we're going to do the sum rule. We'll leave the difference rule. If you want to try it for an exercise, go right ahead. Once you know how to do the sum rule, doing the difference rule is, is no different. So here's, here's a proof of the sum rule. I've also changed my notation so we don't have any sort of uh, letters being reused for different things. So we want r prime of x. So that's going to be the limit as h goes to 0. r of x plus h minus r of x over h. OK. But r is defined to be f plus g, right? So r of x plus h is f of x plus h plus g of x plus h. And r of x is simply f of x plus g of x. And perhaps you can already see where we're heading with this. The next step is going to be a little bit of rearranging. Limit as h goes to 0. So we're going to group together the f of x, oops, h in the denominator, group together the f of x terms, f of x plus h minus f of x. OK. We're going to group together the g of x terms, g of x plus h minus g of x. And of course, we're allowed to divide term by term, so we can do this divided by h. And we can do that term divided by h. And we know that the limit of a sum is sum of the limits. So we have the limit as h goes to 0, f of x plus h minus f of x over h. And then the limit as h goes to 0, g of x plus h minus g of x over h. And that, of course, is f prime of x plus g prime of x. So the sum rule works. The difference rule, you do exactly the same. The only thing that's going to be different is those plus signs are going to be changed to minus signs. Um, that's going to make that a minus sign. Otherwise, you get more or less the same result. Um, so, so those are the basic rules. Um, they sort of follow the pattern you expect them to follow, right? Um, just like with limits, you can pull out a constant. And if you have a sum, you can do it term by term, uh, sum or difference. Um, we'll see in the next few examples how to actually put that into practice. And just by way of warning, you might think that this pattern is going to continue, right? We know that limit of a product is product of the limits. Same thing for quotients and so on. Um, but we're going to find that once we get into products, quotients, compositions, the derivative rules start getting more complicated, right, compared to the limit rules. Um, they're not as simple as you might like, but we'll, uh, we'll see how they work. We'll see why it has to be true. And uh, once you get the hang of it, it's not so bad.